Hey guys, welcome back to another video of Pearls of Medical Nutrition and in this video we'll be talking about diabetes. So what is diabetes? Diabetes happens when your body isn't able to take up sugar glucose into its cells and use it for energy. This results in a buildup of extra sugar in your bloodstream. Poorly controlled diabetes can lead to serious consequences causing damage to a wide range of your body's organs and tissues including your heart, kidneys, eyes and nerves. Why is my blood glucose level high? How does this happen? The process of digestion includes breaking down the food you eat into various different nutrient sources. When you eat carbohydrates, for example bread, rice, pasta, your body breaks this down into sugar, glucose. When glucose is in your bloodstream, it needs help, a key to get into its final destination where it's used, which is inside your body's cells. Cells make up your body's tissues and organs. This help or key is insulin. Insulin is a hormone made by your pancreas, an organ located behind your stomach. Your pancreas releases insulin into your bloodstream. Insulin acts as the key that unlocks the cell wall door, which allows the glucose to enter your body's cells. Glucose provides the fuel or energy. If you have diabetes, your pancreas doesn't make any insulin or enough insulin, or your pancreas makes insulin but your body cells don't respond to it and can't use it as it normally should. If glucose can get into your body cells, it stays in your bloodstream and your blood glucose level rises. What are different types of diabetes? The types of diabetes are type 1 diabetes. This type is an autoimmune disease, meaning your body attacks itself. In this case, the insulin producing cells in your pancreas are destroyed. Up to 10% of people who have diabetes have type 1. It's usually diagnosed in children and young adults but can develop at any age. It was once better known as juvenile diabetes. People with type 1 diabetes need to take insulin every day. This is why it is also called insulin dependent diabetes. Type 2 diabetes. With this type, your body either doesn't make enough insulin or your body cells don't respond normally to the insulin. This is the most common type of diabetes. Up to 95% of people with diabetes have type 2. It usually occurs in middle-aged and older people. Other common names for type 2 diabetes include adult onset diabetes and insulin resistant diabetes. Your parents or grandparents may have called it having a touch of sugar. Pre-diabetes this type is the stage before type 2 diabetes. Your blood glucose levels are higher than normal but not high enough to be officially diagnosed with type 2 diabetes. Gestational diabetes. This type develops in some women during their pregnancy. Gestational diabetes usually goes away after pregnancy. However, if you have gestational diabetes, you are at high risk of developing type 2 diabetes later on in life. Who gets diabetes? What are the risk factors? Factors that increase your risk differ depending on the type of diabetes you ultimately develop. Risk factors for diabetes include having a family history, parent or sibling of type 1 diabetes, injury to the pancreas such as by infection, tumor, surgery or accident, Presence of autoantibodies, antibodies that mistakenly attack your own body's tissues or organs. Physical stress, such as surgery or illness. Exposure to illnesses caused by viruses. Causes of type 1 diabetes. This is an autoimmune system disease. Your body attacks and destroys insulin-producing cells in your pancreas. Without insulin to allow glucose to enter your cells, Glucose builds up in your bloodstream. Genes may also play a role in some patients. Also, a virus may trigger the immune system attack. Cause of type 2 diabetes and pre-diabetes. Your body cells don't allow insulin to work as it should to let glucose into its cells. Your body cells have become resistant to insulin. Your pancreas can keep up and make enough insulin to overcome this resistance. Glucose levels rise in your bloodstream. 
gestational diabetes hormones produced by the placenta during your pregnancy make your body cells more resistant to insulin your pancreas can make enough insulin to overcome this resistance too much glucose remains in your bloodstream what are the symptoms of diabetes symptoms of diabetes include increased thirst weak tired feeling blurred vision numbness or tingling in the hands or feet slow healing sores or cuts unplanned weight loss frequent urination frequent unexplained infections dry mouth in men decreased sex drive erectile dysfunction decreased muscle strength type 1 diabetes symptoms symptoms can develop quickly over a few weeks or months symptoms begin when you're young as a child teen or young adult additional symptoms include nausea vomiting or stomach pains and yeast infections or urinary tract infections type 2 diabetes and pre diabetes symptoms you may not have any symptoms at all or may not notice them since they develop slowly over several years symptoms usually begin to develop when you're an adult but pre diabetes and type 2 diabetes is on the rise in all age groups gestational diabetes you typically will not notice symptoms your obstetrician will test you for gestational diabetes between 24 and 28 weeks of your pregnancy what are the complications of diabetes if your blood glucose level remains high over a long period of time your body's tissues and organs can be seriously damaged some complications can be life threatening over time complications include cardiovascular issues including coronary artery disease chest pain heart attack stroke high blood pressure high cholesterol atherosclerosis narrowing of the arteries nerve damage neuropathy that causes numbing and tingling that starts at toes or fingers then spreads kidney damage nephropathy that can lead to kidney failure or the need for dialysis or transplant eye damage retinopathy that can lead to blindness cataracts glaucoma foot damage including nerve damage poor blood flow and poor healing of cuts and sores erectile dysfunction hearing loss depression dental problems treatment of diabetes mellitus diet exercise weight loss education in type 1 diabetes insulin injections while in 2 diabetes often drugs by mouth and sometimes insulin or other drugs by injection are prescribed experts recommend that people keep their blood glucose levels between 80 and 130 mg per deciliter fasting before meals less than 180 mg per deciliter 2 hours after meals hemoglobin a1c levels should be less than 7% because aggressive treatment to reach these goals increases the risk that blood glucose might go too low hypoglycemia 